get uh, oh. flipped out on you. But we are back. We are back, baby. I'm back. Back in the New York groove. We had a really long day. Yeah, and that's why we're uh, we're doing the podcast at a later point in the day. Night time. It's like the old uh, old days. The olden days. And in fact, we're having a beverage. Yeah, because it's it's like six o'clock. Six o'clock somewhere. <laughs> here. Not here. Truly, um, we had a film. We had people at our house filming something, and I, can't, I would tell you what it is, but I cannot. It's a new to, Spider-Man movie. It is. Um, hey, everybody! Guess who the new peak? Peter Parker is. Is that his name? <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, I almost screwed up. Peter but. Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That's um, right. Anyway, they were here filming us essentially for almost like a promo video. It has nothing to do with the channel. And it's it's like they want to hear about us, which is always weird. And Into the Spider-Verse 2. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm slinging webs out in the snow. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. I can't believe they asked me. I know. I mean, but we I had thought, to go outside and play with Roxy, and you hurt yourself. If you're just listening, Sean scraped up his arm. Can you see it? Are you trying to flex? <laughs> Get tickets. Tickets to the gun show. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, you reached around a tree and scratched yourself real good. That's how you know you're playing. You know, your hardest with the dog. Well, as a kid, when I would climb trees, I'd have those marks all over mm. me because all I was I'd, shocked. I haven't. Uh, hurt myself in a while. while. It's yeah. like <gasps> I fell down in front of the camera crew and was crying. It's been That's, a long time since I've I've worked I on didn't a film see you set. Fall down at all? Oh God, I was crying. You didn't either. In the mud. You never. Yeah. Ro that was Roxy. No, she was running around like a maniac. She's so excited. She's like, clearly you're here for me. And the oh. truth is that they were. All right. You want to get started? Yeah. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Sean. And this is opinions that don't matter. At her. At her. At her. Pow, 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 pow. It is probably. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Probably the number mm, two podcast in Estonia this week, oh, which hopefully. is pretty interesting. Sweden, we have fallen out of the top 100, mm, bummer. mainly because of my accent. And they also found out in a uh, recent episode that my family um, was involved in a, yeah, an assassination. And uh, I, No, it actually worked. Oh, no. It did. I didn't have all the details, but my dad did. He sent in an email, oh. or not an email, uh, a text message. Uh, a link to the Wikipedia article. What? They don't mention us by name, but you know. Well, thank um, God. I know. Don't sully the. Well, it wouldn't be St. Louis. It'd be a different name. Anyway. Apparently, he was a good guy too. He was the king of England. Uh, oh, of, they liked of him. Sweden. Of England. Yeah, he's the <laughs> he king was of the king of England. Yeah. Uh, but he 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 was uh, full of reform, mm. and mm -hmm. he, he did a bunch of good things for the people, and so some people wanted him dead for it. And, uh, those people were <laughs> our relatives. They were, happened to be related to them. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they knifed him and shot him, I believe, um, at a, uh, a a ball. And, That's uh, terrible. Yeah, really bad. I mean, I know I watch that stuff on TV, but the fact that things like that really happen in real life still is like jarring to my person. Yeah. I'm like, he oh. knew it was coming too, which was interesting. Oh, yeah, someone had given him the uh, information, but he ignored the information. And then he was at the ball. Never ignore the inf moral of the story. Never ignore the information. He spoke French when he got shot, so that's how you know it's one of our relatives. You know, uh -huh. yeah. Did he say what was it? We were listening to some song. So randomly, Sean will put on French music, and we were sitting outside because it was eighty-four degrees just a couple of days ago. Today it is freezing. Welcome. Twenty-nine degrees. Burr. Anyway, we were sitting outside on the patio, just taking in the warmth and being like, look at those suckers in freezing states. <laughs> and we laughed too loud and now God is punishing us. But we were sitting out for a bit and Sean will randomly switch over to our nephew's band. Oh yeah, yeah Les Veston. Anyway, and at first My you're cousin. like, you're like, oh yeah, cousin, you're right, not nephew. Yeah. My mistake. And we were like, dun, 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 dun. and then he starts singing and I'm like, this is, Québécois music, I can, I can tell. Alouette, gentil, alouette. No, no, I forget what it was. Something about like the weight of the world, and then I was like, I'm lost with those words. Oh, he doesn't like it. I'm not paying attention to them anymore. Something, you know what I mean? I forget what the actual words are, but I, I can pick up some words of French. That's amazing when you watch concert footage. Let's say I'm going to make it up here. Um, mm -hmm. Guns and Roses in Chile or uh -huh. you know at, at a guns and roses in japan yeah. and you see all the fans who clearly uh english probably isn't their first language yeah and yet they're all singing lyrics in english and they know every single lyric i'm a big fan i don't know the lyrics i know some of them well big fans always know the lyrics but the isn't thing that is amazing though music you, brings you together I know. and 
also you have to acknowledge the fact that English is like a primary language spoken in the world. So the like, next time we go see Les Vestons, mm -hmm. I think they broke up though. But if we were to go see Les Vestons, you'd be mm -hmm. front row and you'd be like, and you'd you know, have your lighter and you'd sing all the lyrics that you knew. Even though I don't know what it means. Yeah. All, all six lyrics in French. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel oh. like I'm already letting down the audience. I don't feel like this podcast has has the, the well, juju. I'll try to the, zhuzh it. The zhuzh. Um, I had another episode of Climb Through the Bed Out the Bottom. Hmm. Do you want to tell me about it? Did you notice or I no? I did. I didn't want to say anything though because it was pretty amusing. It's. I don't know why it's happening. So I'm very inter I'm very curious about my own whatever's going on. I have a feeling that it's a sign that I need a vacation. I need. I'm running away. I'm escaping. I'm escaping. Escape <laughs> through the bottom of the bed. Spoilers: You're still in your fucking house, Katie. Get it together. But uh, was it like two nights ago? I. I don't. It wasn't as dramatic as the other one because no, it wasn't. I, I wasn't like dreaming, dreaming. I was like kind of waking and I just got up to go to the bathroom through the bottom of the bed. And as I was getting out of the bottom of my own bed onto the like bench thing that we have there, I was like, this isn't right. <laughs> I was like, you did it again. <laughs> so I think I need a vacation and like a real one, not where like I'm like, I'm taking time off and you're like, I still have to work. So cool on you and then i just sit in the house and i'm like this is fucking depressing as shit i might as well work I'm gonna have to escape from the foot of the bed i'm gonna have to escape <laughs> all of a sudden you wake up and i'm outside i don't even know <laughs> lord knows and roxy and i've gone away it's i don't know what it was just i noticed it happening and i was like i have to tell sean and yeah, then i I've, forgot i've known you for 12 years now and yeah 12 or two times and Oh, see, Roxy also knows has known us for a while. I concur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I uh, I made notes for today's show. But it's never happened before is what you were saying. You got distracted by the dog bark. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's never happened in 12 years and two times in a week. That's amazing. That's why I think something's up. Yeah. It's like, remember when our friend Steve and Alex were getting married and she got really stressed and she wet the bed? No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. She was like embarrassed and devastated. She was like, it, she told me about it. She's like, Katie, why would that happen? I was like, are you super stressed out? Are you sleeping well? And she's like, yes and no. And I was like, that might be why. You get so maxed out. You're not really taking care of yourself. You're so exhausted by the time because she's trying to like lose weight. She's one of those brides who tries to like really like almost like a wrestler. Like I'm going to cut weight before this big event, which I don't subscribe to at all. You guys know me. And anyway, and I think that was part of it too. She's just so exhausted. Like even if she had to pee and her body didn't wake her up because she was too tired. Oh. Uh -huh. That's that's sad. It happens to people. Like any of you out there, let me know if this happened. When you get super stressed, that can happen. Hmm. Um, anyway, she was embarrassed and Steve was like, there goes our good mattress. <laughs> and then life went on yeah. and it was fine. Poppy peed on the couch. You poppy peed on the couch, yeah. Right, right. Oh, speaking uh -huh. of which, yeah. I, uh, I have some notes and one of them is Seinfeld related. Mm. I was watching a movie mm -hmm. the other night. One okay. of my favorite movies. Yes. The Outlaw Josie Wales. I have no idea what that is. Huge fan of Clint Eastwood over here. Oh, it's one of those co cowboy, they yeah. don't say much movies. No, yeah. it's actually not like a spaghetti Western. It's, it's, uh, I always I forget they're called that. Sam, do you want to explain to have we told people why, they, why they're called spaghetti Westerns? Well, because was, they eat spaghetti. The no, whole. that was interesting to me because I didn't know that spaghetti Western, like I didn't know oh, the, about that or what that meant. Yeah, it's just a, an era in western films there was uh, a director sergio leone who um, is italian italian he's an italiano yeah but he was uh, fascinated by the american west and so they made a bunch of films in italy uh and uh you know they're, they're fantastic but this is not one of them no but this I, I just found that funny so fun fact right after should i let her out she's like ring a ding and ding -a. okay pause please Right. Sponsored by Neutro or whatever. Um, that was one of the purchases I made. So we're back. It was a false alarm, as are most doorbells rung by our doggo. And she, it's mainly a, hey, did you remember I live here? Please give me attention kind of doorbell. But this Neutro purchase was when I had to go to PetSmart a couple weeks back because she chewed the her leash. I had to get a new one and those were on sale. And I was like, look at the ingredients. And I was like, yeah. They're very tasty. Yeah, oatmeal and peanut butter. I mean, do the trick. I'm not and gonna lie. It does have chicken something. Sometimes after I chicken meal, Sean. Sean took a tasty little bite of I'll it. I'll do it right now. Don't I don't I don't. Mm -mm. I'd like to kiss you later, and that's so gross to me. Even <laughs> though they do just smell like they smell like oatmeal it's and peanut, peanut butter. butter. <laughs> I mean, but anyway, that's their primary ingredients are and chicken oatmeal, gristle. peanut butter, 
and chicken meal. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what I like yeah. is when I'm watching movies mm -hmm. and I find someone else in a movie. Oh, somebody from another thing? Well, You're yes. like, oh, it's right. a person from such and such. You see an actor in something. Uh-huh. There's and, probably uh, that, yeah. I like that too. I find that, I do that a lot with Sex and the City people where I'm like, oh, that's Funky Spunk, dude, or whatever. Right. Well, that's not who I found in a movie, but <laughs> oh, look, it's Funky Spunk, dude. It's a guy that has sex like a rabbit. Oh, those are people from Sex and the City. Do you recognize this person? Oh my God. Yes. It's, it's not Poppy. It's a... Uh, is it Poppy? No, it's his uncle, Uncle Leo. That's right, Uncle Leo. <laughs> uncle Leo from Seinfeld. I found him in a movie. Uh, oh, funny. In the Outlaw Josie Wales. I was oh, so funny. excited. I was like, it's Poppy. No, no, Leo. Uncle Leo. Yeah. yeah. So I took a screen grab. I, I got on the screen right now, but I just love, I love finding that. It's like, you know, connecting the dots and my own little personal. Yeah. No, it's always funny because the thing is, is you know that they've been in things before. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you'd assume if he was in Seinfeld that he'd been in something before, but not necessarily. But then when you find, you're like, oh, Law and Order is like that too. You'll find a ton of people. You know who's been in Law and Order a lot? Unfortunately, he passed away recently, which is really sad. But one of our favorite guys from The Wire, Omar. Oh. What's his name? I forget his yeah. name in real life. We just, it just he just passed away. Michael? Overdosed. But I, anyway, I'd have to look it up. But anyway, um, when I see him and stuff, I'm always like, oh, it's Omar. Yeah. The funny thing about these names is that you end up, or I, I should speak speak only for myself, I end up calling them by the name of the thing that I first saw them in. So like um, Michael Kenneth Williams, I said his name was, Omar from The Wire, is always Omar from The Wire. Right. Even though he's played, he's been in a shitload of things. He's like a very, very good actor and been in a lot of things. And she's hitting her doorbell again, even though we unplugged it. <laughs> spoilers okay but so that happened and even um a funny person that i saw like another like uncle leo where you're like huh, was that i saw miranda from sex and the city about i think i'd have to check the dates but like five years before sex and the city got started and she was in law and order and she was actually a murderer Ooh. and she was good she was really in she was like i don't know what you would call them because i know you call them arachnoids like spiders but she was a, a researcher in spiders and someone was she killed somebody with like venom i think hmm I know. Interesting. But man, she was good. You know, uh, speaking of Sex in the City and seeing mm -hmm. someone in another movie, that mm -hmm. made me think of a young Kim Cattrall. Oh, yeah. And she was Mannequin in Mannequin. And... Was she, oh, yeah. She was in Mannequin. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, no, she was in Porky's as well. Yeah, she was in Porky's. Porky's too, maybe. She was a gym teacher. Mm -hmm. She's a pretty lady. Very stunning. And she's been acting forever. Yeah, because that's early 80s, like 82. Yeah. Or... Arguably, I think you could say when Sex in the City began, she was the biggest actress do you know what i mean yeah because she, it wasn't until then that sarah jessica parker's career took off she had done some films but nothing mm -hmm. nothing that, that like hit that she was in like hocus pocus which we all love and know mystic pizza mm -hmm. was she in that one or is that know. the other girl with curly hair I, th I think you're thinking of julia roberts oh yeah yeah but the, the other the other curly haired lady do you think all those curly haired folk look alike rude christoph you agree it's rude Road. um but yeah it's, it's always funny to see people in other things and yeah i mean of course they would be because also in the news mm -hmm. i in the news <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you need like a news anchor voice i got i got a uh, article that i thought you'd be interested in reading Ooh, yeah probably well, not please here read it for the audience because i believe that mm. this is hard-hitting news from mm. the olympics mm. okay cross-country skiing it's for dorks and losers no, it isn't. Yes. Okay. No, nobody likes it. It's good for cardio. But then, but who? And looking through the forest as you glide along gently without While you making wonder why I live in such a horrible climate? No, it's good. <laughs> good sport. Okay. Olympics, cross-country skiing. Fen Remy, I hope I'm saying that right. Apologies, Fen, if I'm not. Suffers frozen <laughs> penis in mass start race. First of all, why is Fen telling people? <laughs> <laughs> Second of all... <laughs> Who wants to report on this? So where is Fen? Oh, he's from Finland. Wow, this is horrible. They were shortened to thirty kilometers, but that did little to help Finland. Finland's Remy Lindholm, who needed a heat pack at the end of the race to thaw a particularly sensitive body part. Do you think it will still work? You know, that's why you don't wear tight pants when you're when you're um, cross country skiing. You need to wear snow pants so your uh, dingling doesn't. Ding uh, freeze like an icicle you know i mean yeah he spent just under an hour and 16 minutes traversing the course in howling freezing winds 
Maybe you needed to put a little stocking cap on your your wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Leading his penis, becoming frozen for the second time. Hey, wait, did the you second le- time. Did you didn't learn, learn nothing, Finn? He needs to get like a little schlong sweater. Got to keep it under twenty miles an hour on the downhill section, otherwise bad. you get chapped. You know? I don't feel. It's almost like um, that reminds me of Andy in the office when he has the sensitive nipples. Oh yeah. And we looked up. I remember when we first watched that episode, and I was like, "Is that even a real thing?" um and it is but on like real marathon runners because of like the the up and down motion of their shirts and stuff like rubbing them Mm. raw essentially but this is first of all finn learn so i don't really feel bad about this time around because is one time not enough for your penis to be frozen i like how they blurred it out i know like from the waist down so you don't see his (laughs) His frozen frozen dangling as if you're even gonna see it oh censorship it's not purple anymore it's blue (laughs) stacy quick give it mouth to mouth oh my so many Uh, dirty jokes okay well anyways um i just think that sometimes when you're you know you have this vision you go through school and you want to be a journalist and you spend all this time in school learning (laughs) and then you have to write headlines like this philip o'connor asked his editor you know do you have anything for me you know i'm I'm looking for a lead yes the editor says funny something just came through on the uh, on the wire i have a hot topic we'd like you to a cool idea it's it's uh i don't even know i don't have anything else to say no i don't either we're at a i know i'm out i'm like icy frigid but how do you make that into? i know how do you make that into an exciting headline right yeah exactly how do you how do you juice up this uh this headline they should have said for a second time because it's really important to know that it's not his first time around what if we rewrote this and sent it in olympics cross-country skiing finn remy suffers second frozen penis in mass start rate i don't think i do mass start race i think second frozen penis right just like (laughs) you have two of them at the same time you know you gotta you gotta tease the audience Mm, with that second penis yeah Hashtag clip. All right, we should probably move on because people are probably getting turned off by by all this frozen. By this, I have some other notes though. Uh So we had Uncle Leo. Uh We had. um, I climbed out of my bed from the bottom again, and I think I need a vacation. Right. I think it's a sign of something bigger happening. Oh, I have some uh, some interesting um, Craigslist ads. Oh, do you want to read one of those? Sure. This is one. um, This is odd because it's here, I believe, in Austin. Okay. But um, anyways, which is a musical town. Mm-hmm. And this one says, didgeridoo needs work. Did you, What's a didgeridoo? It's that round tube that, you know, wow, 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 oh. wow. I think, or is it the rain stick? No, I think I'd the didgeridoo to, is. I'm going to have to look it up because I don't know what a didgeridoo but, is. You know, I think he's just selling a. I think it's just a piece of wood. <laughs> exactly. It How needs much some does work. he want for it? How do you spell mm-hmm. didgeridoo? D I D. G Didger, yeah. I Didger redo. I already know. Thanks, Google, for listening mm-hmm. to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, it's like. Um, okay, so the Didger redo is a wind instrument played with continuous, played with continuously vibrating lips, to produce a continuous drone while using a special breathing technique called cir- oh circular breathing. Yeah, we learned that. In- like musical class and stuff. The didgeridoo was developed by Aboriginal peoples of Northern Australia at least 1500 years ago and is now in use around the world. Though still strongly associated with the indigenous Australian music. The Yolnu name for the instrument, I don't know what Yolnu, maybe it's like a tribe or something, is the Yadaki or more recently from some Mandapool. I'm not, I'm gonna, the, the words are getting out of control now. Didgeridoo it is. And it's from Australia. From cool. the indigenous people. I always find instruments interesting, ones that haven't made it into, not pop culture, but into uh, popular usage around the world. So you see yeah. an instrument, you're like, wow, what is that thing? Well, yeah, like who decided that, that that the flute or the piccolo was picked up and the didgeridoo wasn't? What's that single stringed, chi- is it China that has it? The Chinese instrument that's like one string? The... It's not the, it's not a theorem. What's it? Ther- what's the thing that Theremin? our neighbor had? theremin no remember our yeah it was a, that's what it's called i think it's called the theremin anyway that was like oh, wow, wow, wow. but this is like that it's like a one-stringed instrument i saw it at the sagerstrom center for the arts mm. when that guy that plays the piano was playing i forget what his name was long long yeah yeah he plays the piano anyway he's a nice guy too by interesting the way. instruments yeah interesting instruments there's some interesting ones out there such as the sitar 
for instance, oh, yeah. and that was brought over, not brought over by the Beatles, but um, made There's popular. There's a place in France where, remember that's on the office, he plays the sitar. Ooh, pop, uh, pop quiz. Yeah. The sitar mm -hmm. hit number one in a pop rock song. Mm. And it was the first time, and it was by... The Rolling Stones? Correct. Wow. They got into that weird psychedelic 60 thing pretty heavy. So yeah, I figured they, it had to be them. I think a lot of these I bands... I should go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> din, din, din. You or PJ would have to be my lifeline for most of the music stuff, though. She's still hitting that doorbell that's unplugged. Yeah. Our dog is so stubborn. Um, but anyway... It was Paint It Black? Is that what it... What was? I think so. We because we talked about this before, actually, too, mm. didn't we? I don't know. I was thinking the sitar. I thought we were going to ask is what famous movie was the sitar? You know, in and I was going to be like Moulin Rouge. Mm. I'm the sure party? it's been in other ones. Maybe, was it in the party? I think I think Peter Sellers plays the sitar in the party. Maybe. Oh, is it when they the elephant and the people come back from that funny party with all the? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, we're getting off topic. Right. But that's funny. I don't, I think that's just a piece of stick that that guy was trying to sell. It's like a leftover bit from, you know, putting a fence up or something. Right. A fence post. <laughs> He's like, I have this fence post. I it's a didgeridoo in the making. <laughs> you have to hollow it out because it didn't have a hole in it of any kind. I like that noise though. I don't think you need the piece of wood to make the noise. Maybe it sounds better in person, like amplified, but you're basically just moving your mouth around like you were having, <laughs> you know. That could be a little off-putting people. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, he's he's our entertainment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's not playing the air guitar tonight. No, no. He's, he's playing, playing the air didgeridoo. The didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're harmonizing. <laughs> Those are people you don't invite to the party. No, okay. you really don't. <laughs> you don't pay them to to do the mouth. Hey Ken, didgeridoo. why don't you break out your uh, your invisible <laughs> didgeridoo? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know who you do hire is a guy from Police Academy. They can be like, oh, <laughs> he was amazing. I don't know if he still does that. He does. Bit. Is he still alive? He does. Who was I just talking to? Somebody on some call. I was just talking to somebody, and they were saying that he. Oh, it was Christina. It was on her podcast. Oh, does she know him? Yes, because he had opened for her, or not opened for her, but like they'd been in this the rounds together doing like um not open mics, but like let's say at schools and yes. stuff. They would do little bits at different events and stuff, and he would do his bit. And she was like, he was so good, what a legend, and like people loved him. You know, like the audience ate it up. And I was like, uh, of course they did, because it's amazing. What do you put on your resume if you're that guy? Sound effects. Man? I think you send your your tapes. Here I am. Meow, meow. Here I am being a transformer. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm going to. I don't even know what else he does. Close the car door. <laughs> yep. Huh? <laughs> Tough audience. Put it on our resume. That's why I love it that Michael tries to do it at that uh, salesman's conference for the Northeast. Oh, I know. And he's like, uh, how does he open? Because cause Dwight's like freaking out and getting too anxious. And he's like, good morning, Vietnam. And it's just no crickets. Laughter. Like nobody thinks it's funny. Because also, I don't even know. I don't even know what that's from. If I'm being honest. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. Isn't it from Mash? No, that's Good Morning Vietnam. Is it a movie? Okay, so I never seen said film. How don't, did you not don't see that? Know movie? of such film and never understood why that was even funny at all. There are some serious gaps in your pop culture. I think it's because of my age. Yeah, but that's a classic. I've never heard anybody talk about it. I've only heard people reference that one statement and always thought that must be from a movie I haven't seen. I failed you. I failed you as a husband, <laughs> as a companion. How did we not watch that movie? It's it's brilliant. Great soundtrack. I mean, I don't doubt that it's great. I also, does anybody else feel this way? I have been feeling not motivated to watch any films. Like the thought of putting a movie on is like, no thanks. Mm -hmm. We it, did watch one the other day, which I thought was really It was so really depressing. Good. Well, the end was a little depressing. Because it's called the, Don't Look Up. The world. Don't don't watch it is what they should call it. It was so depressing. What what was good about it? Well, I mean, it was pretty good sci-fi. You know, the whole movie, I was expecting them to save the earth. I mean, there were funny Plot bits. Plot twist, there they were, didn't. <laughs> they're funny bits. And I really enjoyed the character that played like the tech billionaire, like the Apple guy. Kind of oh, like, he, he's, oh, hello. Oh, don't had, look him in the eye. I had to look up who he was because I was like, oh my God, this 
who is this person? Because he's definitely playing a character like deep and he's British of all things. And he's been acting forever, but not in nothing big like that we know of. I did not know him before. Um, he probably has a couple of BAFTAs, I would assume. But it was just, he was really good and it was really funny. And so Do was- Do they call it a BAFTA when yeah. you win it? Oh, I don't know. They, like I know the at the Oscars, you get an Oscar. The but the BAFTA, the British Acting Film Television Authority. I just think they call it the BAFTA. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. Maybe the maybe the uh, the statue has a different oh, name. Oh, yeah. But that seems like, too uh, complicated for the Brits. I don't think they would do that to themselves. Hmm. Brits, what you you chime in in the comments, let us know. But anyway, he was really good and funny. But overall, I wish I could get those two hours back. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. What would you spend them on? Another two hours of The Good Wife? Oh, definitely. It's getting good. It's almost over. I'm at the end last season. Uh -huh. I like how you get frustrated by things, yet you will put on podcasts that last three hours. I mean, they're not predictable, so that's good. This isn't predictable either. Don't pretend that you watch enough to know. How? Right. It, tell me how it's predictable then. Every script is the same. No. That's how you know it's predictable. Every episode. They randomly killed off a main character. I didn't know. even see that it coming. That was pretty good. That and then people get fired that you don't expect to get fired. That's pretty good. I like that too. Also, sh like you'll think that someone's going to hook up with someone. Nope. Somebody else. That's not good. Random. <laughs> you know, things happen. It's not predictable. Uh, shows that are you. predictable are like Law & Order SVU. Yes. And the, any, any HGTV is all predictable. But yeah. Are they going to fix it or are they going to flip it? Well, no, mm. it's just like, you know that they're going to pretend something. Okay. Like love it or list it. I love that show. I love it but super predictable and i only watch it when i go to the nail salon because they always have it on and they'll be like do you like and i'm like i definitely like you can yeah. keep this on what and we're going to do is we're going to take out a couple of walls here we're going to put up some ship lap chip no, Gaines is going to eat fix, something off the ground that's fixer upper right you're switching it's shows. the same show same no, episode fix, every time love it or listed is different it's where like you and i essentially would be the people let's say we're the peeps that they come in to help and i hate this house and i want to move and you love this house now is our realtor a twin no Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyways, they, I tell them what they have to do to the, this house in order for me to stay. I'd be like, rip out all the shitty carpet. I fucking hate it and get mm -hmm. me a new door because mm -hmm. I don't like that door. And then you have to tell the realtor what would take to make you move. And so you're like, our budget is $500,000 and I want that, 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 that. And then they do the things to the house. Hillary does stuff to the house. And then you know, the realtor takes us around. I'm forgetting his name and I'm sorry, David, I think. Anyway. Is that the British guy? No, she's British. Mm. She, uh, Hillary is. Anyway. And then at the end, we decide either to love it, stay in the house that Hillary has fixed, or David has found us another home and we decide to list it and we we get out of Dodge. It's basically porn mm -hmm. for people um, who- mm -hmm. uh, Who don't like their homes. Yes. They watch the My that mom channel. loves that stuff for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Cause Cause she, I think it's also gratifying, like all mm -hmm. jokes aside, mm -hmm. um, it's gratifying to see someone knock the shit out of a wall and then And then it gives you ideas wall. for your own place. Like I, we're so new to this house. I don't have anything that I hate other than the carpet right now. But in our old apartment, which we didn't own and it was eaten by termites. So it was like pretty much held up with toothpicks. But I was like, remember I told you after watching a little bit of HGTV when it was on YouTube TV for a while and now it's back. But anyways. I was like behind our door. So we had this random empty space in our apartment. When you would come in the door, there was like the living room where you live and like do things that runs into the dining room. And then you make a turn and you're in the kitchen, which is tiny. But I was like, if I owned this place, I'd knock out the wall between the kitchen and the living room. Even if there was like a post left, I'd be like, whatever dudes, I don't know, put it. I'd pay the extra, what is it? $6,000 to put the beam in. Cause I'm watching, I've watched TV. So it's a fake beam. No, they put an extra beam oh, in if it's a if it's a supporting a wall. Because I wall. would assume it was a supporting wall. Right. But anyway, so then, or a weight bearing wall. Anyway, do that, and then that room behind. So we had this random space behind the door when you open it up to just nothing. Like I don't know what you do there, like a random seating area behind the door. It never made sense to me. I would bump that wall out, and that would be where the second bathroom would go off of the master. Sounds like a lot of work for a. For a shitty, box. I know, but you, but I had those dreams. I dreamed a dream. Also, the second you start opening up walls in a house, problems is the second you're gonna put you know put five thousand dollars more into it. Oh, yeah. oh, we discovered you know that's the last. Well, and they always said on the show as a new plot point. Yep. Unfortunately, we discovered that uh, there used to be a. You're like yes, go on. No water leak, or there's a crack in the foundation, or the pipes aren't up to code. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to cost you an extra five grand, which reminds me, well, first of all, before I get into this next story, if you have some renovation dreams or fumbles, issues, things, please send us your crazy renovation stories. Christoph, I know you just did a renovation. I'm not putting you on the spot because it might not have been anything crazy, but like any, like I've had friends even say that like contractors don't show up for a while. Like they leave things open. They're like, uh, hello. Like, do you have any crazy stories? Send them to otdmpod at gmail.com. But my friend Joanna and Philip, they wanted to redo their master bath because they needed a bigger closet and the master bath was honestly huge. You know, it's like a waste of space for what they needed. And they found so much shit, like termite damage. This is in Santa Monica as well. Termite damage that cost them an extra five grand to put in a new beam. And then they found like water damage down this other one. I mean, it was just never ending. And then they had to work with their downstairs neighbor because they were in condos because then they had to like dig into their ceiling. Sounds like fun. Uh, should we move on? I think we should get into letters. Okay. Enough about our random life. Okay. And we do yep. have a speak pipe from Father Dubuc this week. Ooh, Dubuc. Okay. Dubuc. I said it like an Anglo. Dubuc. I know. A Dubuc. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to crank this up. And if you want to send in your own voicemail, you can just uh, look at the link in the description. And what's the limit on how long? Two minutes? A no, minute I think and it's half? like 60 seconds. Okay. So yeah. just be prepared. All right. Here we go. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. Salut tout le monde, this is Father Zubik from Le Turc. Winter is arrived, and that is always a challenge time here for sure. For example, the cable TV installer have two very necessary tools to do their job. One, a snow shovel, and two, a ladder. The snow shovel is so they can dig down through the snow bank to find the top of the telephone pole, and then they use the ladder to climb down to the top of the telephone pole. Oh. <laughs> That's just the way life is uh, in the Grand Ole. I have decided it is better to take a break uh, from the church before I make a break. Um, I will spend this winter concentrate on my mental and physical health. And you know that includes mm -hmm. a lot of hockey and meditation for sure. Mm -hmm. But today I had to call in to wish Katie and Sean a happy 100 podcast. Mm -hmm. And I hope they keep making me laugh for a long, long time to come. Okay, my sheets, till next time. Remember to be kind and take good care of each other. <laughs> okay <clears throat> it's funny talking about the snow and like having to dig in uh, to get to the bottom i don't miss it at all <laughs> for anybody who didn't catch that montreal gets a shitload of snow somebody on a live stream didn't know what snow bank was when we we're talking about it because they don't live in a cold climate is that where you put the snow until you pay you, for your snow yeah mm -hmm. you, they store your snow mm -hmm. and then next winter you go get it out and you out put it on your snow lawn bank, and then you make snow cream yep. i learned about snow cream also okay Couple don't things. eat the yellow snow that's not has nothing to do with snow cream so montreal gets crazy amounts of snow and when you either when the snow falls but mostly you're talking about and correct me if i'm wrong but mostly you're talking about snow banks when it's like the plows have come through or someone has cleared their dry and it's made this big bank of snow on the edge so these are snow banks are usually around buildings or uh ditches where the snow's been cleared away from wherever you had to park or drive etc right and they can be huge snow banks huge. can be huge massive like 20 feet high like easily. cover cars like if you 40 feet if high, you live yeah. in a cold climate you know that if it's going to snow you should probably move your car off the road because otherwise going to get hit with the snow from the snow plows and like potentially you can't find your car i mean i lost a car like that once <laughs> for how long like a day no it was, it was oh no it was uh, so hit by the snow plow Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, move your cars. Anyway, so there's that's what a snowbank is. Now, snow cream, which is very interesting. Thanks, Susie Q, for telling me what this is. And also, we have to find a place that you can buy ice cream that's flavored like snow cream. So in Appalachia, yes, which is like in the hills of North Carolina, and it probably goes into snow cream, yeah. is when you have snowfall, you know, fresh snowfall you go out into your backyard where no one's touched it it hasn't been any near anything and it and you scoop off just the very top layers until you get a little bowl full and you can put condensed milk you can put milk and sugar you can put berries milk and sugar but it's just like a it's like a sweet treat and it's they a call bad it, idea but they call it snow cream and it's like you make it for kids and kids get excited that it snows and you make snow cream but you can buy ice cream that's flavored like it and popsicles and all sorts of stuff 
And there's this one brand that Suzy Q told me is like legit, like it knows it shit tastes like snow cream and it's amazing. And sadly, we don't have it here. They mm. don't sell it in any of our grocery stores. I, I, I Googled and Instacarted and nada. She must live somewhere really clean because when I grew up, the snow is filthy. I mean, really disgusting. We're not talking next to the road, like in your backyard where nothing could have touched it. You didn't have mm. like a space where nobody touched it. No, but you know how you get dust on the windowsills and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah like snow doesn't taste very good. Oh, back we back home, we used to like, like there's scoop dirt it the off the top and, and eat it. Yeah. Uh, I remember chewing on an, an icicle once because you'd break it off from the roof and you'd like have your- No, that you know, I wouldn't. Sounds like runoff, like hit your yeah, roof and stuff. I know. And they, those have dirt in them. You can see yeah, it frozen sometimes. I know. Sean. Yeah. Mm. No, but snow in our backyard. I mean, I would eat that. Mm. It didn't touch anything. I lived in the country. <laughs> well, you, anyways. And you'd see animal prints if they were around it. That's it. There's just, there's a lot of stuff in the snow. I mean, maybe if you, you know, found a nice clean patch. Sean but... likes to ruin all the things that are lovely. Have your snow cream and eat it too. No, I'm And kidding. I would do it also. You, you know what we do uh, growing up when you do uh, sugaring off? Yeah, they Ma put it in the snow. Yeah, we pour the maple syrup on the snow but, and then use a popsicle stick to twirl yeah. up. I'm just I always about. wanted to do that, but I know it's going to be like a sugar overload for me because I just like like a little something sweet and then I'm like, okay. Yeah, you don't have to go crazy. Oh, okay. But, I thought you had to and I was like, I can only have like a couple of those things because although those maple cookies that Brandy sent me, those were dangerous. Maple is amazing. It's God's gift. It's a, That's how you know that God loves us because of maple trees. I thought it was beer. That's what people say. Mm. Mm. No, no, maple, maple, maple flavored beer, mostly maple, maple Ugh. flavored gin, no maple thanks. flavored maple, maple. <sighs> Those one uh, candies, I forget who it was that sent me these. I think Brandy actually sent me some too, but they like melt in your mouth. Oh, maple oh, sugar yeah, cookies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, not the cookies. They're like little, little candies. Uh, um, maple sugar, uh, like not fudge, but it's that sort it's of. It's almost like fudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Brandy said stuff. fudge. Anyways, delicious. Yeah. So anyway, back to, okay, back to letters. Do we sure. have letters? Oh yeah, we have, oh, do we have letters? I don't we know. Should, I think we have a couple. I think we do too. Let me see here. Boy, oh boy, I feel all caught up. Oh, and puppy parlance while we wait for Sean to pull up the letters. Oh, the letters are flying in. Puppy. Shoot, we're not gonna be able to catch <gasps> those people. We're gonna be behind. Dang it. Damn it. <laughs> um, Roxy graduated from training. Full dun, marks. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know the sound. What's the song? The. Is she getting married? Dun, 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 dun. No, it wasn't that. It dun, was like, dun, 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 what's dun. the graduation song? It's like, um. <laughs> um. <laughs> you guys don't know that one? <laughs> it's a big hit. But there's a graduation song, and I can't think of what it is now because we've sang too many songs. But she's graduated, and she still needs some work, so we might have her do a couple one on ones. A little summer school, maybe. Yeah. Um, like we had those guys over to film today and she could not get it together. She like jumped all over them like a maniac. But also she's a puppy and part of me is like, I wonder if we wait a little bit and work with her ourselves and then see if she needs more. Cause I, I think gotta it's be honest, also, I didn't read the book. The good book? No. Well, I, <laughs> the green book. <laughs> I was forced to read the, the, but no, the dog training book. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> well, what they told me to read. I just, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's like, arf, arf. Arf, arf, arf. And I'm like, well, I don't know what. That was very loud in my headphones. Was it? Would you take it back? Arf, arf. Okay. Oh my God. Remember that TikTok of the lady that has a, it's a German Shepherd Husky mix. And she was like, you're being too loud. Oh. Be quiet. And it was like. <laughs> remember? No. It was like barking. She's like, it's so loud. And it was so funny because the comments were like the mouth of a Husky, but with the demeanor of a German Shepherd, right? Because it was like, it wanted to talk a lot. She was like, it's too loud. And it was like, <sighs> oh, sorry, Roxy. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to tell you this is from yet, but it's just entitled, It's Been Too Long. It says, hey, Katie, Sean, and the OTDM audience. What's up? Hey, guy. It's guy. <laughs> it's been a while since I wrote in. It's been a roller coaster to say the least. So let's catch up, oh. shall we? As stated, in August, we had the sewage leaking into the river. Gross, I know. Well, it seems to have been cleaned up now and we can go kayaking again. But wait, it's now 34 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.1 degrees Celsius. So we cannot go kayaking, cry face. However, we are in February, so not long now until spring. Later in August, I had a tragedy hit me. I lost my best friend. 
And not just any best friend, my goodest boy, Sammy the Beagle Boy. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. That's such a bummer. On August 31st of 2021, I was woken up by Sammy around 12.30 a.m. by him just spazzing out. Um, just being woken up, I'm not thinking anything of it as it probably is just one of those running dog dreams that he has or, you know, that people videotape. And it's funny for a while, but that's not the case. He ended up having a stroke and spazzed out because he couldn't move normally. His head was stuck to one side and he couldn't walk or eat anything. Oh, jeez. Unfortunately, the nearest emergency vet was closed due to the staffing shortage. Thanks, COVID. I know, fuck you, COVID. So I waited around all morning until another vet who took walk-ins was open and off we went. We were there all day waiting, appointments first, and then they would fit us in. We go back and he gets taken for labs and then he was brought back to me. We sit there waiting for the vet to give us some hope. That didn't happen. She came back with a with paper estimates in her hand and she gave us the choices. $32,000 for treatment that is only for two weeks and that may not also, it may not even work or $450 to put him to sleep. I sat there bawling, holding Sammy in my arms for a good hour before making my decision. I know that stuff is hard. That's like our friend uh, Megan had to put her dog Margo to sleep because she had like congestive heart failure and she had her on meds, but it was costing her like $500. I mean, every time she had to take her, it was like 500 and something dollars. And she was just like, I just can't keep doing it. And she also felt like you feel bad for your animal friend, right? You know, cause you don't want them to not feel good or to, God, Kai, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> As I cried and cried, I looked into Sammy's eyes and we communicated. We could always talk this way because you can feel the connection. I could see that he was in pain and that he knew he wasn't going to get back to normal. So he asked me just to let go so that he could run again and eat all the chicken nuggets in all the world. His favorite snack. I called my sister. She drove to meet me and my mom at the vet's office for our last time together. I laid him down on a doggy bed and the vet brought out that oh, that the vet brought out and I laid my head on his chest, reassuring him that he'll be okay. The vet proceeded to give him the sedation medication they give before the actual euthanasia meds. With my head on his chest, I could hear his last breath and his last heartbeat. <sighs> Megan did that too. Makes me want to cry. She like couldn't, I it, it mean, it's so hard. He was gone and we didn't even give him the euthanasia meds, meds yet. Oh, any healthy dog would have fought it off, but Sammy didn't fight. He was sick, sicker than we thought. We gave the, they gave the euthanasia meds due to policy, but I laid there crying and didn't let go of my baby boy. He was only seven years old. I went home to an empty bed, a bed that was once for two and now too big for one. A week later, I go and pick up his ashes and his clay paw print that they made for me. Oh, that's sweet. I cried harder, the longest week ever, full of tears and sadness. The next day, I got a call from my sister and our granddaddy died, 84. I'm so sorry. God damn, so much so many people in our community have been dealing with a lot of death and loss and i'm so sorry it's hard it's so heavy every time someone passes away in my life i always forget how fucking heavy it is yeah it's like oh <clears throat> this is the granddaddy that i just met mm -hmm. back in june on my birthday so it didn't hurt as bad but it still hurt i fell into a depression hole for months and i'm now starting to climb back out yay in november my coworker told me that her cat was about to have kittens and if i wanted one i had first dibs in December, five days before Christmas, I got him. And Jasper is his name. Oh, Jasper? Yay, what a cute name. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have pictures of, but hold on. And not of Jasper, we have of our, the Poochie, the sweet puppy boy. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh what a cute my doggo. goodness. Mm. What a sweet boy. Oh my goodness. Oh. I said they that. look so smart. Like they they have something going on you know they know mm -hmm. <laughs> they are smart oh oh okay. Uh. okay sorry i got to the kitten but hold on so <clears throat> as of this email he is three months and two weeks old and let me tell you he's psychotic <laughs> as cats are they're like purr purr <laughs> fight 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 he loves to play with tissues and socks and loves to bite me this face my ankles don't like it though. He's getting better and bigger. And a bed that was too big for one is filling up slowly with the addiction of squash of squish mellows and a kitten. Slowly getting back to a happier life. On January 28th, I got a tattoo of Sammy's paw print. Definitely worth it and it helps with my mental healing. He's with me forever and now I can see him with me too. I love that. Thanks for reading my novel. I think we are all caught up on my roller coaster that we call life. I've attached pictures 
and I give 100% consent for you to use them in your video format. Stay awesome, Kai. P.S. I typed this email out five times and cried every time. If only iPhone email app would um, auto save. Sigh. I know. Bummer, dude. I'm so sorry. But we have a bunch of dope. That one's just so, just living his best life. So cute. And then I love the baby. The baby. That cat looks like hell on wheels. <clears throat> look, I know. Yeah. Those long hair tabbies oh. are, uh, yeah, they look real cute. But they're cute. first of all, it, oh, they're the little snuggle. terrorists. You know, they, I they're. Know, they're a little snuggle my fan. <laughs> Just, oh, look how much bigger though. Oh, wow. Growing pretty quick. Yeah, like a weed. So teenager. Such a teenager. Oh, and there's yeah, the pop print. Cool. Cute. Nice ink. Yeah, that's really cool, Kai. I'm so sorry for all that you've been through, but I'm glad you're back. And I'm glad that you have a kitty to keep you. I think there's something, even growing up, whenever we would lose a pet, it was like there's a hole. And it's like you, I don't know, I feel like once you've had a pet you always have to have a pet because you like want that need that i don't know that unconditional love and cats don't give it quite to you quite the way dogs do but they do yeah basically if the cat is not um scratching your stuff mm -hmm. or peeing you. or pooping mm -hmm. in your stuff uh that means they you know they're really they showing love you, you love <laughs> there's this <laughs> or girl. if they bring you like a dead uh you know possum oh, mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. that also bird, is love right? a bird yeah, especially if they tear the head off of it and they just leave it on your doorstep. That's true they're love. Like, they're like, thank you for being, this yeah. is my my token of appreciation. Yeah. Um, there's this girl I follow on TikTok who has a clingy cat, she calls it. And she's like, here's how you do things with the clingy cat. And she's like doing laundry with one hand because it wants to be held. And then when she like lets it go, it like climbs up and like holds around her neck. It's so cute. Siamese cats do that. They they get up on your neck and hang out. Oh, um, Molly never did that. This was like a darker cat. It was just a random cat. But mm -hmm. I remember my cousin Jeremy had this cat named Tiga, and Tiga would do that. And it, he'd put his little paws around your neck and pull himself like in nuzzle into your neck. It was so cute. Oh, talk about heartwarming. Okay, are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Good to hear from you, Kai. Glad you're back. This is from Suzanne, and it is entitled "Experience with a Bad Doctor." Mm. Dun dun dun. Hi, Katie, Sean, and the OTDM community. This is my first time writing in. I hope you enjoy my story. Welcome, and we're glad you're here. Several years ago, I started having multiple medical problems from migraines to double vision to dizziness to blurred vision. This sounds like maybe vertigo or something. <clears throat> my mom had some of that happen, and she had to like lay down for a few days. My, I think it was my mom. My aunt had it too, and my friend Sarah. Has anybody else had vertigo? That shit's crazy. It's just like lay on your side for like a few days. And it'll like, the crystal will like write itself or some shit. Not hashtag, not a doctor. Okay. So my family doctor sent me to several specialists to try to help him diagnose what was going on as well as doing an MRI. His first thought was that I had a brain tumor. Yeah, something pressing on your optical nerve. Jesus criminy, Christ. Mm. Thankfully, that was not the case. Thank okay, God. Good, good. Jesus Christo. One of the specialists that he sent me to was an internal medicine doctor and at as I stated, this was several years ago. This doctor did his exam, and after his exam, he looked at me and said, do you know the show Survivor? I said, yeah, I do. He said, you could go on that show for a few weeks without eating and out-survive everyone. Did you kick him in the nuts? Fucking prick face. When you leave here, go down the stairs, and there's a door at the right. Go to that door. In there, you'll find all kinds of heads, eyes, and brains. Just pick out what you want. That's the best thing for you to do. What? I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand. I mean, what a dick. Well, let's continue. Okay. He's a dickwad. That's the best thing for you to do. I was absolutely, absolutely speechless. I did not have a response for this doctor. I couldn't believe that any doctor would speak to a patient in this manner, right? Like that you can pick out a different brain and eyes because yours are broken. Like what a fucking piece of garbage. I went back to my primary doctor and told him what happened. He was very apologetic and said that he would send me to someone that he thinks might help me. So he sent me for a consult with an eye specialist. That's what I was thinking. Like wouldn't go to an internal doc. I'd go to like a neurologist or a, you know, ear, nose and throat or eye specialist. Sometimes you have to go to whoever is available, you know, True. and start the journey there. And then you kind of. True. This doctor sent me to have a spinal tap. He wanted to send me as soon as a spinal tap. Oh, he wanted to see me as soon as a spinal tap was done. 
No one told me that you're supposed to lay flat on your back for seven to eight hours after having a spinal tap. Because I was late for my appointment with him, the lady at his front desk was mad and made me wait to see him for two and a half hours. Why are people such dickwads? I almost got sick from sitting in the waiting room. As soon as he saw me in the room, he laid the seat back so that I was laying down. Needless to say, the receptionist got in trouble for allowing me to sit there for so long. He couldn't help me either. After getting home, I ended up having spinal fluid leaking into my body because the hole from the spinal tap didn't seal. <gasps> Terrifying, Suzanne. Jeez. I was in severe pain and unable to get up for a week. <clears throat> How are these people licensed? I was almost to the point of being put in the hospital because of this. I went back to my primary care doctor one more time, and he finally sent me to one more eye doctor for an eye exam. He took one look at my eyes and knew exactly where to send me. I had to go to a pediatric eye doctor. The determination was that I have overworked eye muscles, which is usually found when you're a child. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. As soon as I went to see the pediatric eye doctor, I was scheduled for surgery. Since then, I've had two surgeries and my double vision is manageable now. Oh, perfect. The migraines are manageable and they have learned to correct my vision. So now I see two eye doctors and I'm the oldest patient that one of them has. Isn't it funny? There was a period of time where I saw my PD, my pediatrician before going, like, cause I would go home from college, but I hadn't like, you know, established care. So he would still see me. And sitting in that waiting room for like my physical was hilarious. Cause like kids with shit stuffed up their nose and like coughs and they're like six to 10. And I'm like, 1890. <laughs> I'm like, I should probably find another doctor. Um, okay. So now she sees two in the original pediatric. Um, oh, she's the only one near me that will see adult patients. Gotcha. And the original pediatric eye doctor I went to retired and he recommended her. Otherwise, I would have to drive four hours to go see an eye doctor. Ooh. So that's the end. Thank you for all that you do, Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne, I'm glad you figured it out and it wasn't uh, something that was too severe. Hopefully the right? migraines go away because that's uh, no fun. Yeah. And um, you say you see two doctors, but perhaps you only see one doctor. And <laughs> Sean, now's not the time to joke. She's got the double vision under control. I know, but the diagnosis was pretty good. So. It was it. But bump. Sean's always the, the comedian. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what's so frustrating is because we have to advocate for ourselves because one opinion just frankly isn't enough it's not you know if you're dealing with something that they're like oh i don't know hmm, you know or they make some offhanded jerky comment like it's not appropriate no it's not okay okay that's why i, I can't be a doctor because i would just say awkward <laughs> things all the time yeah foot and yeah, foot and mouth disease okay this is from allison and this is entitled are you ready you're I'm gonna ready. get excited get, are your engine started a hundred plus mile per hour. Ooh, in I am excited. A 2013. Wait for it. Yeah. Ford Focus. <laughs> <laughs> You're going about 50 miles too fast mm. in the Ford Focus. It says hello, Katie and Sean. Today I have a story about well, a pretty lucky and crazy experience that I had about a year ago. So let's just start out by saying Ford Focuses are not. I repeat, not meant to go. 100 plus miles per hour mm -mm. it was a cold wednesday night i was hanging with some <laughs> What's with the... well is she in australia maybe i don't know and i don't think so oh, then it would be like a holden escort <laughs> probably okay <clears throat> it was a cold wednesday night i was hanging out with some friends suddenly we got the dumbest idea ever <clears throat> excuse me for a little visual i live in a small town in california now we know Okay. The most interesting thing to do is to go to the Walmart. I think we grew up in the same town. Mine just was in Washington and yours happens to be in California. It's like, what you doing? Going to Wally World? Hot, hot Saturday night. Cool, dude. Okay. So we do what we can to keep us entertained. Anyways, I'm getting off track. There we were sitting in the Walmart parking lot. We thought it would be a good idea to go on one of the windiest roads in town, but there's a catch. I would drive my car and my four other friends would be in the car in front of me. Let's race, I exclaimed. My friend who was driving in front of me knew the road by heart. One, car, do, hmm? one car is transportation. Two cars is a race. Mm -hmm. Is that the, that's the motto? That's also, motto. it's funny when you're growing up, because I grew up in the country too, and there's like windy roads and like these highways that kind of cut through parts of town. It's mainly like farmland and stuff. 
and you do get to the point where you know that road by heart. Like I used to be able to cut across this road that connected my town to the neighboring town and I could haul, I could get there. I mean, it's like a 15 minute drive. I get there in like nine minutes. I'd be like, Frrr. I'd go like 60 miles an hour when you're supposed to go like 40 because I knew it by heart. And but my little local, Integra. I was like, and you'd say, where are the cops? And I'd say, I don't know because I live in a, a small town where there's a lot of farmland. They're probably on the other side of town doing their best. Okay. So let's race. My friend who was driving in front of me knew the road by heart, and she also knew what speeds to hit at specific turns and when to slow down. I know you know when you have to hit your brakes. Obviously, I did not. I must have thought I was invincible or some shit at the beginning of our quote unquote race starts. I'm in the back um, of her. Oh, I'm in the back of her just trying to keep up. The first part of this road is just a straightaway. And after the straight, it's hairpin turns. I was so good at keeping up with her and my adrenaline was pumping. I believe you. I was getting so into it. I must have, it must have slipped my mind to check my speed. The only thing that forced me to check it was when my wheel started to wobble. Oh, you know that like, you're speeding out of control. Oh shit, fuck. I was doing 110 miles per hour. I couldn't slow down in time. I had no other option but to keep going. The first turn came up so fast. And saying that now, no shit, it came up so fast as I'm hauling ass, LOL. <laughs> going 110 it came up fast mm -hmm. as i was watching my friend in the car in front of me i was trying to mimic what she was doing because i knew she knew the road by heart first turn she moved to the outer lane to make the turn i did the same she cleared it i did not <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to laugh at your action <laughs> i'm almost positive i lost memory of what happened in those five seconds all i know is the next thing i knew i was in a ditch i was okay though Good. like i was perfectly fine my car on the other hand it was totaled. Really? Womp, womp. Oh, I'm glad you were okay. <laughs> right? I, I don't think, well, yeah, they would have airbags, I would assume, in 2013. 13, yeah, of course yeah. they would. We look back now and laugh, but believe me, one of the hardest phone calls to my mother ever. Hey, so, uh. Someone stole I the may, car and I may have crashed they crashed it into the car ditch. car into a ditch. Yeah, I was at Lesson the library learned. studying when the car was stolen. I was studying real hard. Lesson learned, don't do dumb shit. We should add that to our, uh, you know. Don't do not do dumb shit. Yeah, like, wasn't it our, I forget what we called them. It was like, don't be a dickwad, mm. remember? We're, we're collecting these. David redacted you. Let me know. Um, what What's it called? The tenets of our religion? No. Is the, it the tenets of our, I think it's like of our city. Oh, so would it be like the. OTD, OTDM Landia? No, OTDM Land or whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. Or whatever we're calling it. Right. But what is it called? What are our things? Not amendment. The Constitution. Oh. That's the word. The Constitution. Okay. So. The rules. Hope you enjoyed my story. Love y'all's podcast and hope you're doing good. We are. We and are. thank you for writing in. It was so good to hear from you, Allison. I'm glad and that you're okay. And I'm glad you're okay. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet mamma jam. 110 in an escort. That's uh, right. You know, Guinness Book of World Record uh, <laughs> material right there. It's wild. Good job. I mean, not good job. You shouldn't be doing that, but good job. Hey. She survived and she's okay. That's it. Probably won't do that again. No. And you learn lesson learned and mm -hmm. no one was harmed. No, you know, thank God. Okay. We have a letter from one of our staff writers. Oh. From Austria. The Prime Dave? Minister, the Prime Minister of Rock and Roll. Fred? Yeah, Fred. Mike. You're getting former. Mm. Crystal. Oh, yeah, hey. yeah. It is entitled Dogs Drinking, Napoleon, Creativity, and Name Butchering. I caught shit for talking about Napoleon in a previous podcast. Someone told me that I was repeating British propaganda and that he was quite tall for his age or for, for his era. And who really cares? Why? Well, it's fucking Napoleon. Everybody I, always calls it a Napoleon complex or whatever. The right. I guess I was repeat. I, I looked it up though, and he was only five, six. And for that era, he was still fairly short. That's and still a pretty short man. Yeah. I think five, six is it's for, not, not for saying era. like, oh, you're super short, but like that's a shorter man. Yeah. Well, anyways, I mean, I'm five, seven and I'm a woman. I'm not a heightist. No, I mean, but I'm. I, I didn't mean to uh, offend French people. For, oh, it was French people? It was well, Napoleon French? I don't French? think it was a French person. I think it was somebody who was like maybe anti-colonial or something. I, I just, no. I felt bad. I was like, oh, I, I didn't mean mm. to repeat British propaganda. I guess. I don't know. Enlighten us. Mm. I've, I don't, five, six. It does anybody else think five, six is like a shorter man? Besides, I live where the revolution happened, you know? Revolution. We got rid of the British people. <laughs> right. We, we, we left. I'm not a propagandist. We made our own land. Yeah. There's a band called Propagandi. That's a fun name. Yeah, like you know, because you, you, you hack off. Whoa! 
She doesn't like it. She says, stop talking. I'll get rid of that joke. Okay. <laughs> Back to Christoph's letter. It says, hello, Katie, Sean, Roxy. Roxy already says hi. And the whole OTDM world. Christoph here, still the musical genius. And as you might not know, a studied historian. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that jealous first of all i can assure you that roxy drinking from the fountain most likely won't do her any harm our dogs also love to drink outside from empty flower pots where the water is old and stale okay although we always keep fresh water for them in the house the one outside must taste better that's the thing is that we have water in the house too and a bowl outside and she still insists on drinking from the fountain it's got flavoring the flavoring bird poo and squirrel mm. saliva mm. okay as long as there aren't any suspicious, there isn't any suspicious stuff in it, like chemicals or dead animals, it won't hurt them. And it is, isn't it funny how they always want to chase the wildlife out, wildlife outside? Oh, she hates. I, I don't birds, know birds, squirrels, anything. There's a murder on her mind. Northern cardinal mm. that likes. I'm pretty sure it's the same one because, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's he's he looks the same, uh, same size, same coloring. I'm sure they all look very we similar. We looked it up, isn't it? Isn't it like a a Carolina something cardinal? A northern cardinal. Oh, okay. So they make a, like a laser beam noise. Pew, yeah, pew, 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 pew. Pew. And we were like, what is that bird? We are not familiar with yeah. said bird. Anyways, it comes to the, the window and mm -hmm. taunts Roxy at this point. It does. So that's. And she goes, not so. Not so, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready to move on? Okay. Only a few days ago, I saw a mouse in our small backyard garden. I like the mouse. And as long as it stays outside, I don't have any issues with it. I hear that. But our Stroopy, he would love to catch it. So this big dog runs through the garden from the bushes, the ivy wall and the table where we have empty flower pots and waits for it to show. <laughs> Reveal yourself. But he never actually stands a chance as he's pretty big and the mouse can easily hide from him. And he is well behaved enough that he doesn't take everything apart, though he loves digging holes in the ground. Something to take into account when going outside. So does Roxy and... The only thing I can learn online is that you're supposed to say no dig and take her to a place that she either can dig or bring her inside and give her treats and like rejoice that she's inside. But then I feel like I'm like rewarding the digging. I don't know. But then they said to put chicken wire over it or rocks or something to make it hard for them to dig. So that's where we're at. You okay. know what I did mm -hmm. to teach her a lesson? What? Because I can be tough you with the dog. Tough. No one, I know. You know, I don't put up with stuff. So no. she dug that big hole. Yeah, that huge hole. And so I took her outside mm -hmm. and I made her sit mm -hmm. and she sat. Mm -hmm. She and wouldn't look I, at the hole. That's the funny thing. Then I she produced went. her favorite toy. Mm -hmm. I put it in the hole and I buried it. You didn't either. I did. And I said, dig another one. You know, you know she's going to dig it up. That's the dumbest way ever. To... <laughs> I yelled at no, her. No, no, no. She, she, she didn't dig it up again. I don't, he's lying. You guys also. No. Which, so I did. which toy was it? It was the blue chew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was in the garbage. I already put it in the garbage. Okay. Ready? Yeah. He's telling his t tall tales. Sean loves a tall tale. <laughs> you want me to go along? Do you not like that I ruin your tall tales? <laughs> okay. Okay. So. If I'm not lying, what am I doing? You know? Are you good? I don't know. Tell tell the truth, I tell you. <laughs> okay. So digging holes. Then in episode 101, you talked about the Napoleon complex. Mm -hmm. And it is quite funny as he was by no means a small man. Oh. He was actually around six foot, no. rather tall for his time. No, he was not. They believe that he was, sh oh, the belief that he was short comes from two main sources. One was the British propaganda who talked about, who talked that their enemy small, saying that their enemy was small. <laughs> oh, and Napoleon, that, he's got a little wang. <laughs> and the second is that he was almost always surrounded by his guard and these men were even taller. So he looked rather small between them when he'd come out. Christoph, I looked on Wikipedia for, you, you know, can't always trust Wikipedia. They said five, six. So well, help us out, peoples. Fun fact. When he came to Vienna in 1809, he resided in the Imperial Palace of Schönbrunn. Probably fucking that up. Probably a pretty nice place. Though. And had the Habsburg Eagles replaced by two French Imperial Eagles. Although he left town for further adventures that same year, they've never been taken down and are still prominent adventures. on top of the ob obelisks. But only a few people realize that today. Isn't it funny how there's, I like those kinds of cool facts, historic factoids. Yeah. 
Napoleon showed up. He brought his junk and he put it up in our palace, <laughs> well, but no, we didn't want to take it down because he's a murdering nut job. Who, well, no, he took down their bird things and put his bir- the different type of bird up. Yeah. So it still like essentially goes with the the French eagle is smoking. And it'd the be like yeah, I Austrian mean, eagle is uh, casual playing just, guitar. I yeah. don't know. Okay, about being creative. Yes, it is a gift, and I am sure every one of us has it just in different fields. Like I'm creative in music and I like to approach tasks at work in creative, sometimes unusual ways. Others are good writers or paint, but also scientists are creative as discoveries are usually done by curiosity and creative thinking. Mm -hmm. I agree. And yes, it is also hard work. You do not wake up one day and have that eureka moment. It is a skill that must be trained. That's why working on an assembly line, Mm -hmm. I think is the most inhumane, one of the most inhumane jobs you can have. Mm -hmm. At first, it may be pretty fun. Oh, I've got no real responsibilities aside from just putting this rivet into something. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine year after year having to do that same job? And just it, it, it crushes you because- It's gotta be soul draining. Yeah, you, there's no creativity. You know, you yeah. can't put the rivet in sideways or- But people like who, people who have jobs backwards. like that can find creativity in other parts of their life. Because you're pretending that work is the only way to have creativity. and. You know, Christoph doesn't make music for a living. He does it for a hobby with no, his, that, I'm with just his saying, buddies and his band. I'm just saying that working on an assembly line is, you know, yeah. soul crushing. Okay, fair. Duly noted. Finally, you asked for name butchering, and I have some experience with that. Of course, Christoph is not a name that can be butchered easily. I know it seems pretty standard, but it can be misspelled in so many ways. That's like Katie. People always say Katie correctly, but they spell it all sorts of wrong ways especially my grandmother used to i know isn't it bad christoph when your own family members misspell your name my mom's grandma so my great grandma pearl swear to god every christmas it'd be different k-a-t-y k-a-t-t like caddy like what uh k-a-t-i-e it was like get it together we're related okay so his grandmother used to write it Christoph C H R I S T O P F. Why hmm. do you need the P F with P F? Yeah, it's a P H with P F at the end instead of P H. <clears throat> then, as a young boy, I must have looked a lot like my uncle because my grandfather used to <laughs> used to call me by his name Jurgen. Ah, oh. I think that's it. J U R G E N Jurgen. Yeah, right. And that's how our friend spells his name too. No, I think Jurgen puts an E after the U. Oh, oh, I think you're right. You know, potato, potato. And I reacted to that as he said it in such a loving way that I really didn't, really didn't matter to me, right? Being nice. I loved my grandpa, but the worst thing is my last name, which starts with S C H, which is in German like the English S H, so sh. Mm -hmm. But so many people in the US have butchered my last name, which I do not want to disclose fully here, and I respect that. But as they speak it, SK, I remember when I was an exchange student in Minneapolis and there was some event at school and my name was called and it took me a few seconds to realize that he was reading my name as I didn't recognize it. (laughs) He butchered it completely. So the first thing I would do if I ever get married or move to an English speaking country, get rid of that last name. (laughs) Causing you all sorts of, I know, I just, there's something about it when people can't pronounce it or can't spell it, it starts to like really bother you. What would your last name be? Yeah, what would be? If you got to change your name. Maybe he tells us. I don't know. Oh, she's shaking. Okay. Um, Okay, but sorry, I lost my place. So, and okay, get rid of that last name. And not officially, that already happened anyways. The wife of our vet, who knows my girlfriend for more than 30 years, always calls me by her last name. People will call you by my last, my maiden name. That's understandable though. Yeah, I think people don't realize that we started the channel when we weren't married, Mm -hmm. like we were just dating. Right. And then to change everything to another last name is like totally complicated. Yeah. So that's really funny. So he's called by his girlfriend's last name. She then apologizes and said she knows this is not my name. And we agreed. It really doesn't matter. It's our family name, even though we're not married. And I'm okay to go with it. I think that's wonderful. But that reminds me, maybe I should think of a cool stage name. Oh. Yes, you should. What will your stage name be? Let's Although I see. must admit, I just like to use my initial CS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that too. C.S. Lewis. I, that's what it reminds me of. But you could come up with a cool stage name. Anyways, that is actually more than I originally thought it would be. Love you guys. Keep up the great work. Yours truly, Christoph. Hey, buddy. Thanks, thanks for writing Christoph. in. Christoph, that's Very wonderful. interesting. I don't know if I buy the whole... I know. You seem to not want to buy that well, Napoleon was Well, I looked in tall. Wikipedia and they told Wikipedia me. Wikipedia doesn't know all... They must have... There wouldn't be photographs of him, but there, there must be some pretty good 
you know, uh, you'd have to go to the French archives to find out exactly how mm-hmm. how tall he is because the French wouldn't lie. Your hand must taste delicious. Roxy's. Oh, uh, uh. oh, oh, not not his boo boo. Uh, she's a doctor. Doctor, Doctor Roxy on the. <laughs> okay. Be careful with your paw there. No. Going to scratch him. Okay, that okay. was a little uh, cameo from Roxy. She likes to say hi, and she just likes attention. Really, you've got the treats. Get more treats. Okay, now moving on. We have a letter from our Toronto liaison. A. A. Ron? Uh huh. A. A. Ron. Aaron. And it is entitled The Stairs, all caps. Hello, Katie, Sean, Roxy, and the OTDM family. Hi, Aaron. Roxy says hi. Yahoo! <laughs> Team Canada Women's Hockey. Yahoo! Amazing, right? Amazing. The- <laughs> My sound scared her. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I, I don't even have the words for how how we the women watched it too. It was really good. So skilled. It's mm-hmm. it's really some amazing hockey. I hope that they uh, take that show on the road. I believe they're doing a couple of city tour. Mm-hmm. And if you have a chance to see them in your hometown, check them out. It's amazing. No, I saw this question on episode one hundred and one, and I had to answer it. Growing up, what is something you hated that you can't explain why even today? I don't have many memories as a child until I was 10 years old. Thanks, Dad. Not loser, right? Jerkwad. Anyways, in the house that I grew up in, my dad and my next door neighbor had taken the stairs down to the basement and made a storage space about 10 foot deep. The stairs had hinges at the top so you can lift up the stairs and hold it open with a long board. Oh, cool. And the stairs had open backs so you could see what was stored in there. Also, I guess to make them lighter. Yeah, make so there's light in there, right? Mm-hmm. I always hated the basement. Again, thanks, Dad. Not a loser. But these stairs, not you, your dad, you know what I mean. But these stairs were separated from the basement by a hall with a bathroom and a laundry. Anyways, I would avoid them at all costs. Or if I had to... Um, Oh, if I had to like be around them or go in them, I ran up and down as fast as possible. It's like you. I know that move. Into the way, out. <laughs> that last step, they're going to get you right. That last step, that's what you always think. So um, I would think that something was under them and was going to reach out and get me or something like that. I know. I think just knowing that there's like space under the stairs makes it even worse because you already think those wood stairs that they can reach through is like scary enough. Also, my dad was one of those dads that if we had had a basement, which we did not, thank the heavens, he would have hid under there just to scare us. He always liked to scare me. So he'd like reached and grab my foot or something. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So if mom needed me to go get something, I hated it and would do it as fast as humanly possible to get away from those stairs and what I thought was under there. In my late teens, my mom's decided for some reason that I can't remember why um, to have that area boarded up again. And oh my God, I was so happy. Even though it was boarded up, I still hated those stairs. I still to this day cannot explain or understand what it was about those stairs. Congratulations on 100 episodes. I am so grateful for all the laughs, serious topics, puppy parlance, or in this episode, poopy parlance, what grinds my gears and getting to know our awesome OTDM family, learning something new each week, and the many, many options that don't matter or many opinions, sorry, that don't matter. Thanks for making all this possible. I look forward to the episode every week. I've also come out of my shell and stopped believing that I can't write letters because they don't make sense because of my um, LD. What does that stand for? My Learning disability. Learning disability. Because of you two, which is huge for me. Oh, yay. You can write letters. They're amazing great. letters. Yeah. Thanks for being so awesome and creating this amazing community. Here's to 100 more. Hugs, Aaron, the awesome contributor. Remember, awesome Toronto contributor. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. This is one wonderful. Okay. We actually have another from Aaron. She's coming in hot this week. Oh, okay. Doble letters. I know. She's Ooh. found the power of the pen. I got the power. Woo. Okay. We're back. This is entitled No V in the Polish language. Oh. Mm-hmm. We were just oh. watching. Hmm? Sorry. No, I was just, um, we were watching Trailer Park Boys and bubbles 
was explaining how they have the A team. You know, you send your A team, they're the best. They get things done. Da, 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 da. He said, but we're going to be the V team. And I thought he said the B as in boy, but he's talking about V as in Victor, which is the same as Aaron. No V as in Victor in the Polish language. And he was saying how it goes. The ideas can come from Ricky and they have to go through Bubbles before they get to Julian. <laughs> or if the idea comes through Julian, has to go back to Bubbles before it gets to Ricky because this straight across thing is causing all sorts of chaos. And he was like, we'll be the V team. I thought that was pretty funny. It's pretty good. When we were, when I first got into filmmaking, um, one of the movies that we wanted to make a short film was the Team A. So they were oh, Canadian. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Lamar had come up with that. We never made it, but um, that's like the A B family, right? A E H. Yeah. It's cute, clever. I like it. Good play on words. Yeah. Okay. Back to Aaron's letter. It says hello, Katie, Sean, Roxy, and the OTDM family. I knew I should have waited to send my last email till the end of the podcast in case there was something else to oh, add. So okay. sorry, I'll try to keep this short. You are totally fine. When you were talking about the funny name mistakes, I had to share. My dad's side of the family is from Poland and the Ukraine area of the world. When they immigrated to Canada, the spelling of our last name got changed by the border. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the border people. Mm -hmm. That happened to a lot of people coming through Ellis Island too, or they'd want to drop part of their name to like assimilate more. You see, there is no V in the Polish language. So half of the family is Kotwa, K-O-T-V-A. Oh, okay. And the other is Kotwa, K-O-T-W-A. Mm. When mom and dad were first together, they lived in the same apartment building with my family, and there was a Kotwa, and they were Kotwa. She said that um, they drove the mailman crazy, I'm sure. <laughs> So she said, um, oh, even to this day, there are Katva and Katwa families in Canada because of a border person somewhere. No, I have new, no clue why they didn't fix it right away. Sorry again for the double email. I'll be more careful in the future. No need. It was fun and this is cute and I like it. Hugs, Aaron, the awesome contributor. Okay. It's funny how people's names get changed when they travel to new lands. Yeah. And um, my friend Veronica said that their name because it was Scala, mm -hmm. but it was Scalzetti, mm. but they just dropped it to Scala because they wanted it to sound not, I don't know, not as Italian. I don't even know what the reason was. I think they didn't want to be associated with other Scalzettis or something. There was like oh. some issue. Maybe they were, you know, devious. Mafiosos? <gasps> dun, dun. I would just say deviants. I don't really know. Oh. She's being such a good girl. Do we have time for one more letter or how are we doing? We certainly do. We Plen have time for... One more letter. And okay. Then, then we should wrap it up. Yeah. And so we have a I'm couple. Because I'm running out of treats for the dog. We over. have, we only have three more after that. All so right. we are catching up. So Perfect. don't, if you have been holding on to a letter or maybe sitting on to a, sitting on a letter, now's the time to pull it out and send it in. We don't mind. Okay. This is from Morena. It's entitled. Speaking of Italians. Uh-huh. Sleep stories. Uh, I'm yes. excited because I've been crawling out again, so I've got to figure this out, you guys. It says, hello, everyone. This is Marina from Italy, OTDM's grandma, a title that is even more appropriate if we're talking about sleep. Remember, she likes to stay in. Yeah. I appreciate that. I am the kind of person that absolutely needs her sleep. And if I am really tired, I can't stay awake. Is Italy a bunch of principalities that were cobbled together to make one nation? Is that what, what happened? I don't know what that really means. I think they were all like little like independent little things, that little came kingdoms together. of some sort, hmm. principalities. Marina, do you know, or maybe Kristoff knows, our yeah. historian? Uh, the Europeans, don't, they know so don't much. Don't we have a historian terms. of OTDM land? Mm. I feel like I have to go back through our roster. I'd have to look at the roster. Okay. Anyways, sorry, Marina. So, if she she absolutely needs her sleep, if she's really tired, cannot stay awake no matter what. So if you're planning a sleepover with friends, don't even bother inviting me because a couple of times I went, I was the one that after 1 a.m. could be found in the corner sleeping while everybody else is still talking. Oh, I, you wouldn't fall asleep at our sleepover because... Well, you would write on people or do bad things because you're kind of a turd face. Like that. No. Boys are more turd facey. No, 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 but we'd just be so loud and having so much fun. That, you know. If you're, She said she can't stay awake no matter what. <laughs> don't matter. Play the drums, sing a song. Lorraine is going to be sleeping in a corner. I have a funny story about this, but first, Sean asked if we sleepwalk or sleep talk. And what I do, it's a little different. I chew. Oh, I grind my teeth, but I think she's- A being... sleep masticator. I'm masticating right now. I make this soft noise with my tongue that is very similar to chewing, and we laugh about this um, with my siblings because I also love food, so me chewing also during sleep seems somewhat appropriate. Anyways, back to the story. <clears throat> That's like, it's funny because people do funny things in their sleep. You and my mom both do this thing 
that I have to like put it out of my head or it drives me crazy is you breathe out and you do the so it's <laughs> and when we had us now we have a king bed we used to have a queen bed in our apartment we, we were so close like that i felt like it was like right in my ear <laughs> and i'd be like honey can you just or i'd roll over and like put a, a earplug in or something and my mom does it too and we i remember we were staying at my my aunt and uncle brad and roxanne's well, place well good thing i didn't marry your mom then <laughs> you wouldn't even know you'd both be doing it um but we stayed at their beach house once my mom and i right. and i was like why does she do that that's crazy i never said anything to her because i'd like i get i'm like marina i get tired i fall asleep like it's you know and <laughs> this is like you jump forward like eons later my mom is with larry and he says you always do this thing in your sleep and i was like i know what is with that and i was like sean does it too anyway we commiserated over the mm -hmm. okay so marina choose you and i talk we get we get the whole gamut now back to the story i was on holiday with a couple of friends and we shared oh we shared the room i know that's how my friends learn i i talk in my sleep i always try to warn people i'm like i mainly laugh so like sounds crazy it's a little disconcerting but get prepared um okay we spent the evening talking until late hours and at the time we were discussing characters for a role-playing game that we wanted to begin mm -hmm. i was playing the detective good choice in the late 1800s and for my outfit i asked for a top hat which i absolutely love that would be fun i do love a top hat shortly after midnight as usual i went to sleep even with all the lights on and my friends still talking as i said nothing can stop me from sleeping when I'm tired. At one point during the night, I later found out it was around 3 a.m., I woke up to one of my friends saying she could wear a bowler hat. I think it's more appropriate. Somehow, as sleepy as I was, my brain was able to process those words and without stirring, I said, I want my fucking top hat. <laughs> you're like, you're not gonna fuck me over today. I might be asleep, but I'm still here. <laughs> they were caught by surprise being sure I was asleep we all started laughing they were indeed talking about my character and it looks like i woke up at just the right moment and i got my hat in the end yay anyway thank you for another entertaining sunday morning lots of love from italy marina that's some pretty serious sleep talking i i love it that's yeah. really funny can't get enough that's i mean you know it's good good stuff at least you caught them and you got your hat no bowler hats that's not the same that's not as exciting as a top hat i do concur a bowler hat looks like a gangster's hat to me, like something they'd wear in the 1930s, you know? Kind of. I mean, it's just Or you'd a, be like a, at a horse track. Yes, you know? that's what I think is more horse Gambling. track -y. be like a degenerate gambler. Yeah. I you think, ever been to the, the horse races, Katie? No. I feel bad for those horses. I do too. I just can't. There was a period in my life where I would you go to the race. played the horsies? <laughs> Did you ever win at the horsies? I didn't understand. I still don't understand gambling. And I'm at an age, so I'm 40 six goes in Go to five, carry the one 46 years old be 47 two. in spring mm -hmm. and sometimes i'm around other men sometimes women but not that often because women aren't degenerate gamblers like men are but <laughs> like once in a while you'll meet a real degenerate gambler and it's a woman you're like well that person's really they've really gone around the bend but basically men like to gamble i don't know what what it what, what, what would you say psych whoa, 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 whoa. psychologically is going on there? Is that just to get the rush that it's we would get rush. from? It's a dopamine hit. Okay. It's addictive for a reason. You right. get, it's like the same. I think women are more prone and ladies, you speak up or men speak up if I am wrong. Um, I think we're more apt to buy something for that rush. Right. And it just like gambling, it's a quick hit and yeah. dives real quick. And even if you win, that's still not that long of a, your brain doesn't sustain that dopamine dump for right. very long well uh when i first moved to california i used to go to the racetrack a little bit i didn't know that many people mm -hmm. and uh, lamar you decided to hang out with degenerate gamblers well that's no, where i try to we, meet new friends we, we paid for the more expensive seats the Whenever. degenerate gamblers were below us they bring their lawn chairs in man that is palookaville you you don't want to get stuck in as a gambler no offense if anyone out there is a gambler well it, there's gamblers anonymous get some help it, it is an addiction. Yeah. But, you know, I don't understand how it works. And so they they do like weird numbers, the over, under, the the, the mm. stretch, the wiggity wog. The, the wiggity wog. You know, there, there's two points what on that. What was that instrument called? The doodle doo? The didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. They yeah. play that every few minutes. <laughs> um, 
but you know like you know there's two points on the the vig and the juice is running you know and what then some mean? guy wants to break your legs what does all that mean exactly i don't understand any of the You're terms using words that i that are not words i know yeah so anyways sometimes i'll be around other dudes who know how to gamble and uh -huh. they talk gambling talk and so just like uh -huh. when i was a kid where i'd fake snapping my fingers <laughs> I'll sprinkle in a couple of words just to like to fit in to fit in with the dudes and I'm like oh yeah <laughs> uh, the over is too much eh you know like mm -hmm. or uh, oh the under and you just kind of roll your eyes as if you know what's going on that reminds me what show was it we were watching where they would talk I forget what it wasn't like I can't remember you maybe you'll remember but they were talking to some guys and the guys would give them some sports talk so that they could talk with other dudes about sports but okay. they didn't know they didn't know but they this one guy would give them some words like some things and you get these texts it was like <laughs> for it was called like i'm nerd for i'm nerds for sports or okay. something and this guy would like text what show was that god damn it was a really clever idea but the guys um get into pickles because they like start hanging out with these people and they don't really know and the people think that it's like a british show was it the it crowd i think it was the it crowd yes it was i think you're right they're in a car scene mm -hmm. at one point they, yes. end up, they end up like stealing stuff and they oh, get all... they were talking about sports in the bar yep. and then and that's how they meet those guys right but because they don't understand soccer or football or whatever you want to call it and they don't watch it and that's what was happening with and me. then the guys are like oh did you see the game and they're like i don't know what to say when guys from like upstairs try to ask us like where and so anyway that um that's what that makes me think of is like you not really knowing but you're like i have a couple words and that's what they had a couple words and that gets you into big trouble you apparently. fake it to to fit in you know yeah we but all do it it's to, okay. to fit in with gamblers i mean that's not my scene and i remember <laughs> when i was younger one of my buddies because gambling used to be illegal you know you weren't mm -hmm. allowed to do it i grew up around a lot of reservations and so they've they always allowed it from what i knew right we always had like some indian reservation or when um, i was a kid native could, american reservation or what I, what do they like to be called now i forget i'm learning you guys it's a uh, is it native american yeah okay native american indigenous people yeah maybe indigenous i don't I know i think they're interchangeable in terms i don't know yeah I, anyway i grew up around a lot of native american people because obviously rural washington um north if you, america yeah, if you I mean, didn't know oh yeah north america but we had a ton of different tribes in the areas where i grew up and a lot of the names in washington are uh native american names like uh you know snoqualmie or sammamish or whatever do you know how canada got its name how oh. they took a bunch of letters and they put them in a hat and uh oh c a n a d a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um, um no but when i took the duck tour up in seattle uh seattle was actually not pronounced seattle and it was it was spelled a little bit differently but in i forget which it's not that chumash anyway i forget which uh tribe it was but it, they called it siatate hmm. so my cousin amanda and i still call it siatate sometimes good for you for using the, the proper it's name the proper term that's right yeah only the cool kids know now you're one of the cool oh my god i read the funniest thing this is not fact checked but it was on quora because i love quora and they said that in an interview he talked about this so i don't know if it's 100 percent true again not fact checked but apparently um and now i'm blanking on his name his dad was mr costanza in oh the, ben stiller stiller yeah ben stiller he apparently is addicted to m&ms and it got to the point where he was eating like four family size bags a day or something. It was like a crazy amount of M&Ms. Once he'd start, he like couldn't stop. And it was just M&Ms. And I was, I had the that's question. A, that's an odd thing to be addicted to. I mean, it was more like he's addicted to sugar or something. But I, like everyone else out there, wondered what kind of M&M, Ben? Just plain? But I would say 100% go for peanut butter like roxy and her treats go for peanut butter or go for, or bust but anyway he had gone to like a hypnotist to like stop i don't think it's more i think it was more like maybe binge eating or an addiction to sugar or something like that which spoilers most people or maybe are. just obsessive compulsive i don't know i find some people i don't know what he's like so i don't know ben obviously but like some people can be so type a in other parts of their life that they just have like gotta have this outlet like this one outlet and that could have been like his thing where he's like i just go crazy in this part you know and because you can't keep everything going it's could too be much worse, right yeah could be worse but anyway he'd been to a hypnotist a bunch of times and it would it 
like hang and hold for like six months or so and then he'd slip back into doing it and it was really interesting i was like well, what so celebs they're just like us <laughs> one m&m at a time joe pesci's betting on the horses and yeah ben stiller's eating family size m&m bags yeah i had to get away from the horse racing mm -hmm. i i, I, called I don't it think quits. i could be around that i tried i put a bet and i had no i couldn't read the the lingo that they're using i couldn't you can't just read place the a board. bet be like i bet honeybee wins the race oh there's all sorts of weird language like uh to place to you know and then the oh. order and it's so well i think they're gonna win first can you just say that yeah i think you can huh. yeah but i anyways i didn't enjoy it and yeah. i know that i'm not an addictive gambler mm -hmm. or i'm not addicted to gambling because every time i try it i'm instantly i regret it i hate it i'm like i, I could have done so much back. other with yeah and i've the funny thing is i've never actually gambled my own money oh, which people smart. people find fascinating and of course in like my Wait, er you're not gambling my money it, our, it's our money it'd still be just as much mine as it is yours. are you gambling our money no okay so are you sure yes People find it really funny that Let I have. Let me feel your wrist. I want to see. People, people um, <laughs> find it really funny that I've never gambled any money. And so when I, one of my best friends lived in Vegas, mm -hmm. actually two of my close friends through college lived in Vegas. So we'd go out to Vegas periodically and stay with their parents. And, you know, you go out at night and inevitably somebody there would be like, you've never gambled. Let's go gamble right I got to take you gambling. Well, then they think like beginner's luck or whatever. You've never tried heroin? We should try heroin. Spoilers. Watching someone gamble is really boring. And it takes a lot to lose like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, on just those little where you hit the thing. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Ah. Oh, like the penny slots? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it was because I'm not, I don't even understand. But they were just so sure. I have a beginner's luck. Never. And so I can still say I've never gambled my own money. That's good. I have gambled other people's money and I have lost it. And I, every time I tell them, I think we could do something different with this. Like, let's go get a cocktail or a snack. I love a snack. Maybe a hamburger. I don't know. Vegas is disgusting for it, though. I Honestly. I do first not of all, like I, Vegas. I, I don't care if you gamble. That's fine. I, I joke about it. A lot of people enjoy it. It's, it's a rush, right? My hairdresser always comes out on top. My grandma was even like that, where she's like, once I've made my money back or I'm in the green, I stop or mm. I just lose the money I brought. So she'd bring like a hundred bucks and that was all, she, you know, you the, play with it. Till. The discipline, discipline gambler and yes. you're using it as a form of entertainment. I mm -hmm. get that. But you know, I know it's, it's slippery slope and you get really wrapped up in it and it can take your life away. One time mm -hmm. I was in uh, Southeast Asia and I was He's gambling been playing Southeast Pai Asia. Gao, Pai Gao. <laughs> and I didn't know the rules and I was like <laughs> sweating. <laughs> Oh my god you know how difficult like if you're if you're a gambler mm -hmm. you know you you could really get into some trouble there's places to gamble everywhere now it used well, to be like just off track betting yeah now it's everywhere it's online on your phone you could be gambling it's your everywhere. money away it's and really it's, they should be ashamed of themselves i think the government shouldn't be allowing it but i guess i understand because the internet is it's opened this door mm -hmm. or pandora's box of gambling yeah pandora's gambling box mm. was opened and you can't put it back in the you box because mm -hmm. someone would be hosting a gambling site offshore and you wouldn't be able to control it right unless you so they they just have to allow it which is bad news because yeah boy it's everywhere and and well and just know this a good friend of mine in la who's a psychiatrist and a very successful busy psychiatrist enjoys gambling but very reasonably but he enjoyed it so much so that he as a person with a psychology background went on to create a bunch of, of games and he's oh he, that he's using the dark arts but that's the thing is like i'm just saying that not to say like because his games are in vegas and big casinos and stuff and i forget the names. the names i don't know if is I is it a progressive slot machine is it wheel of fortune no to go bing, 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 no bing, one bing, has bing, like dragons on it and another one i don't know anyway it's not game a, of thrones i don't know is it a progressive I don't even Does know what go, that bing, means. Bing, 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 bing. That, I don't. I don't know what that means. All I know is that casinos don't get rich off of you winning, and people like him aren't able to sell these games because he'll sell like a ton of them. Like they bought fifty of your game, and they have to license it, and it's like you make good money. He wasn't able to stop doing his practice half time because it was hard to take breaks, and we all know it's like a burn and a churn when it comes to being a mental health professional. It could be very exhausting, very rewarding, but also exhausting. Anyway, he did that like 
for a huge he ended up being able to do it more and make more money out of it and so anyways there's a psychology behind it and it is meant to make you want to select certain things so that you lose oh 100 percent, and, and to get you hooked on it want to play again and that psychology is used in apps and that's why i play candy crush but right. i don't pay for shit yeah in like that when, app. You're, when you're swiping on mm-hmm. an app yeah. that that causes a, a little dopamine hit ooh, ooh. you never know what's going to show up <gasps> what's going to be next it could be a bicycle crash it could be <gasps> a, a busty lady it could ooh. be you never know what you're going to get when you swipe and then a it dog. refreshes a puppy dog i always hope for dogs yeah, yeah. oh my goodness i do too <laughs> more for busty lady no no i got my busty lady you want i'm not very busty but busty enough for bow, me bow, bow, bow. <laughs> um do you hope for car crashes or someone skiing down a hill or i mean i watch I your instagram stories so big into mountain bike accidents because i mountain bike and i know what it takes like you can see a crash happening before well because you can see they're not on the line like yes. they're not running the right line or they have the wobbles because i don't I don't mountain bike as much. I'm not as good as you by any means, but I've done it enough to know. You're pretty darn good. And I know when I'm going to eat shit. And so therefore I know when they're going to eat shit. Yeah. (laughs) I can hang in there. That's why it's so fun to watch. But yeah. Oh, we should go back. Mm -hmm. I want to go back in time. Boing. And go again with Joe that one time. That was really fun. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. We have to eat dinner. We love you all. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Please send in. The stories that I asked you to send in, I forget what that was about. Don't gamble. Don't. The moral of today's uh, episode is don't gamble. Oh, also, Mm -hmm. if you could send in, and this is how I'll know that you listen to the very end of the Mm -hmm. podcast, you rap scallions. Mm -hmm. Those rap scallions. If you send in a letter Mm -hmm. and it is things I wish I had said, but (gasps) didn't think of it in the moment. I hate that. And like like five minutes, an hour, a week later, you're like, fuck. You know how I know I'm a spiteful, resentful man? You come up with those things? You think Like two years later, I'll be in the car, my mind will be relaxed, I'm listening to good music. Maybe it's just a chill out session. I'm going to Mm -hmm. going somewhere with a nice scenic drive. Mm. And then all of a sudden I have a vision of a conversation I had with somebody that I didn't like about 10 years earlier. And I'm like, I should have said, next time you try that, buddy, I'll kick you in the 